All right, so in this video, we're gonna look at Dodo Payments. Dodo Payments is a payment processing platform which is also merchant of a record. That means that in your customer statement, it will show Dodo Payments name instead of yours. So that means that there's a lot less paperwork and a lot less tax stuff which you need to deal with, which I am not really sure. In this video, we are gonna see how you can integrate Dodo Payments in your Next.js application. One cool thing about Dodo Payments is that it supports UPI. So if your audience is Indian, you can easily sell to them because we know that in India, a lot of people solely use UPI and not use cards and stuff. Other than that, the Dodo Payments team is very innovative and they keep looking for the newest things happening in the payment space and they are the first one to add those in the platform. So I would highly recommend for you to try out Dodo Payments. This video is only gonna focus on the developer aspect side of things. If you have any questions about the business aspect of this, make sure you go to the Dodo Payments support team and ask them. But in this video, we are gonna see how you can integrate Dodo Payments directly in the Next.js application. So yeah, let's get started. All right, so we are at the Dodo Payments homepage. It's a very cool homepage. It says payment infra for fast growing businesses. We act as your merchant of record, lifting tax compliance burden and freeing you to focus on growth, not paperwork. So yeah, let's go ahead and click on get started. This should take you to the dashboard. I am already logged in. So it's gonna take me to my dashboard. And as you can see, we are in the test mode currently. If you wanna go to the live mode, you have to do a little bit of paperwork here and there, but not a lot of it. So yeah, you, if, you are, if you are just testing out, if you are just a developer who is making payment integrations for your client, the test mode is enough for you to test out. All right, so the first thing you need to do as a developer is go to the developer tab and go to the API keys. And you can go ahead and add a new API key. I'm gonna just say that uh, YouTube. So I'm gonna create the key and then I'm gonna have this key. I'm just gonna copy it for now. And uh, you know what, I actually have a Next.js application here, right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a .env file, .env.local file, and I'm just gonna say Dodo Payments API key, and I'm just gonna paste this here. Don't try to use my key. I'm gonna rotate this anyways and this is just a test mode you're not gonna get anything from it so yeah i'm just gonna close it the next thing we need to do is actually we need to go to the products and we need to set up a new product this is the one which i created for testing is this the subscription i'm gonna go ahead and click on add product i'm gonna say product name this probably should be test subscription i guess uh, i'm just gonna say pro uh, because this should be the pro plan and i'm just gonna say this is the pro plan if you are using this in production you probably should be editing this to more realistic description you know like just don't have the stupid description just have something like which makes the user understand what they're paying for uh, then we need to upload an image i find this annoying i don't always have an image to upload so i'm just gonna upload this thumbnail and the next thing we need to select is brand i'm just gonna select test business this is optional and uh, in the tax category, this is very important. I, I said that I would focus only on technical aspects of side things, but like uh, this is very important. If you're selling a SaaS, you probably should mark this. Uh, I think this is the part of the review. And uh, if something is wrong, your product might get disabled. So make sure you have the correct one select here. In test mode, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna use SaaS. So here we have single payment, subscription, and usage-based billing. We are not gonna cover usage-based billing here. It's gonna be a completely different video. If you wanna see that video, let me know that in the comments down below. Uh, we are gonna cover subscription because single payment is very basic. I just wanna cover something more complex. And if you can do subscription, you can also do single payment as well. So I'm gonna keep the cost to be $10. And uh, I don't want any discounts repeat payment every one month so you can also select if you want to do payments every 14 days you can also do that and uh but i'm just gonna keep it to one month and uh yeah the subscription period should be 10 years after 10 years the subscription will probably get inactive if you want to have any trial period days you get that feature out of the box then yeah you can simply just go ahead and create the product now we have the pro subscription i'm gonna simply you can simply just go ahead and copy the product id later on but the next thing I want to actually do is I'm going to get rid of like the dashboard. Like I just want to get rid of everything that needs the dashboard right now. So I'm actually going to go ahead and set up a webhook. I'm expecting you to know the basics of payments. So like webhook is basically whenever the payment gets successful, Dodo payments will send an API call to your backend telling you that the payment is successful or if anything changes, even if somebody revokes the subscription, if somebody cancels the subscription, this is the way Dodo payments lets your application know. And that's where you can make some database changes in your application. So I'm simply just going to do this. Uh, the thing to note here is that I have an ng rock open here and ng rock is forwarding 
all of the requests sent to this URL to my local Next.js instance. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this and I'm gonna paste this and I'm gonna say slash API slash webhook slash Dodo payments. We're gonna set this route up, but for now it's gonna have nothing. Uh, I hope they had a select all option here, but I'm just, I, I, I probably understand why they didn't do that, but for testing, I would really appreciate that, but it's fine. I'm just gonna select everything here and I'm gonna go ahead and click on create. Now, any kind of payment successful or any kind of events that are happening in our project will be sent to the specific endpoint and we have to handle it later on. Then we have the signing secret. We can just go ahead and copy this. I'm gonna go back to my code base and I'm gonna add this here, Dodo Payments webhook secret. I'm gonna paste this here. And now we are all set with the Dodo Payments dashboard. Now we can simply just go ahead and start coding our API route and then we are also gonna look at our front end and we're gonna make sure that both integrate. We're not gonna cover authentication in this part, but if you have any authentication, take that into consideration. I will mention which parts are brought from where. So let's get started. All right, so we are in our Next.js application. The first thing I'm gonna do before doing anything here is actually installing the Dodo Payments SDK. So I'm gonna do bun install Dodo Payments. So this is gonna install the Dodo Payments SDK, which we can use on the server side. And now we can simply just do bun dev to run the server and it's gonna run on port 3000. Yeah, perfect. And uh, if we go to a uh, port 3000, I'm just gonna go here. We're gonna see the next JS. Oops. We're gonna see the next JS hello world screen or whatever it is called. So the first thing we are gonna do is we are gonna create an API route. So I'm gonna create an API folder and here I'm gonna create a new folder called as checkout. And I'm gonna say, route.ts. This is the way you create API routes in Next.js. So here we can go ahead and do some stuff. So the code I'm writing, I'm going to admit is not the best way to write code. You sh probably should be going ahead and like splitting the code out into different files, but this is just a tutorial. So I don't want to really spend a lot of time. So first of all, let's instant instantiate the Dodo payments SDK. So I'm going to say Dodo payments. So this could be in a different file if you want. So I'm just going to do new Dodo payments. And here we are gonna pass in the environment to be test mode because we are in the test mode currently. And here, the next thing we need to do is bear a token and we just do process.env.dodopayments API key. And I'm gonna pass in an exclamation mark because I know it exists. And then the next thing we need to do is export async function post. And this is the Next.js API handler. If you're using a separate backend like Ono, make sure you use the specific format to do that. So the request, it's gonna have the request which is gonna be next request. And now we can simply go ahead and do some stuff. So first of all, I'm gonna have a try catch block and I'm gonna first of all console.error and the next thing I'm gonna do is return next response dot JSON and I'm gonna say, oops, 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 oops. Okay, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say message internal server error. And the next thing we need to pass here is actually the status. So I'm gonna pass in the status of 500. So if anything goes wrong in this API route, we can just simply throw a 500 error and the client side knows that instead of some unhandled error. So first of all, I'm gonna have some kind of validation here. What we want from the user is the name and the email. So if you have an authentication system already set, you probably should be doing that. I'm simply just getting the e like email and the name from the user through input boxes. Not the best practice to do, but if like you have an authentication system set, you probably should already be creating a customer on Dodo Payments platform using their SDK and uh, or else you should be just getting the email and name through your database. I just wanted to keep this tutorial simpler for people to understand. So because there's a lot of different implementations people can use, right? So I don't want to like cover all of them. So it's like const body, we are getting the body. We are having a regex here, which checks if the thing is an email or not. And uh, then we are checking if there's a name present. If there's not, we are throwing an error. Then we are checking if there's a body present and if it matches the format, regex format here. And we are gonna say, if it's not there, if we are gonna say it's not a valid email, then we are getting these into a variables and now we are good to go. And now we can simply just go ahead and call the Dodo payments part here. So I'm gonna say const checkout is equal to Dodo payments. Uh, actually, we need to do await here and uh, dot checkout session dot create. And here we actually need to pass in the product card, which is going to be an array. And first of all, we need to pass in the product ID, which is gonna be a string, which we'll fill later. But then uh, before TypeScript stops, like we 
for us to make the typescript a server stop crying we also need to pass in a quantity which is supposed to be one in this case and yeah and the next thing we need to pass here is the customer details uh, i promise you pass in your customer details that's really not that hard it makes your life easier later to search subscriptions if you are not passing in customers i don't know like you probably should not be doing this anyways uh, name should be customer name uh, email should be customer email unless you're doing something really anonymous which i think you probably should not be doing with this payment platform for many many different compliance reasons you probably should be collecting this data and storing this in your data payments to filter and cancel subscriptions later and to track basically who is subscribing if somebody cancels your subscription there's no way to know which account did that <laughs> so yeah and now here let's fill out the product id i'm gonna go back to my data payments dashboard i'm gonna go to products and here i'm gonna actually go ahead and copy the link to my sorry the id to my pro subscription i'm gonna go ahead and paste this typically this should be an environment variable doesn't matter like this is just a demo and now the next thing we need to do is we need to do return next response dot json and we just need to pass in message uh check out url created successfully and the next thing we need to do is uh, pass in the url itself so check out dot check out url and there's one more thing we forgot here is the return url so let's pass this http localhost 3000 slash and that's it because data payments will append all the details we need here so we don't need to worry about this a lot more so in the page.tsx this is the basic default next.js page so i have a page made this is basically an ai generated page which i built so i'm gonna use this oops hold on just go ahead and copy this properly perfect this is an ai generated page if we save this you're gonna see a completely different screen so the handle submit function is the very important function we are dealing with everything is just ai generated ui i really like when i use ai to make my videos super quick so the first thing we are going to do is we are making an api request to a slash api slash checkout which is our checkout route and then we have the method as post and then we have form data and stuff we are passing in the form data which is like name and email and then if the response is okay we are going to the url which is passed by server or else we are just having the error and which is we which we are set, setting to something went wrong or if we have a message we are going to display that so yeah and the one thing we left to do is we need to actually create the webhooks route so webhooks slash dodo okay it should be webhook slash dodo payments and here we are going to create a new route.ts file and i'm going to leave the file link to this in the description below for this github repository but this is supposed to be how your webhooks file is we need to actually install the standard standard webhooks package so let's go ahead and install that bun install standard webhooks and now let's wait for this to run and now let's do bun dev okay perfect so this package is going to help you to deal with webhooks and this is the package which is recommended by dodo payments itself so don't really need to understand all the signing logic you can simply go to my github repository and get it so i i myself copied this code from somewhere so yeah and um, then this is the important part this is the very important part i'm I should say actually because this is where you need to update your database. You can notice that I have a bunch of comments here and these are the ones which are really important for you. What I would say is create one function which checks subscriptions if the person is subscribed or not and depending on that change your database values and call that subscription call that function in all of these things the same function. I would recommend doing that it's way more easier and i'm not doing that here because we do not have a database in this one so it's just fine so what happens is that whenever somebody cancels a subscription your database should know and if you're uh, like if somebody like cancels a subscription there's they still have the access to it so make sure that you're also listening to the subscription updated one which will actually tell you if the subscription is active or not so whenever you get an active false one you simply go into your database and you make sure you revoke the subscription benefits from your user so webhooks are really really important for you as a developer so i'm pretty sure if you have already worked with something like stripe you know what webhooks are if you don't know this is i really recommend playing around with this you can also go ahead and console log stuff out so i'm simply just gonna do console.log i'm gonna say oops i'm gonna say webhook what's wrong why is it crying okay it's in a switch that's why it's crying i'm gonna get it out from here i'm gonna say webhook plus uh, and actually i'm gonna go ahead and payload 
dot data. I'm going to save this. And whenever we have a successful payment or subscription change, we are going to get that here and that we can inspect it and you can actually go ahead and update your database that way. So now let's go ahead into our application and we can enter our email. First of all, let's add my full name. I'm going to say Atharva Deostale. The email I want to use Atharva at test.com. Typically, again, this should be from authentication and not from an input value provided by user. Let's go ahead and click on continue to payment. It says processing. Now we are here and it automatically prefilled my details. If you want, you can also enter your phone number. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say test address. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to select any random address. It doesn't really matter in the test mode. And now here it says 922.17 per month. So it actually converts to the user's price depending on the user's location or else you can actually pay in USD as well if you want. But the total after tax is 11.80 and uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and click on continue to payment. I want to save this address. Now you have the test card here, but I remember the test card. It's basically just four to four to four to all along. And uh, yeah, I'm going to say Atharva Deostale. I'm going to go ahead and click on pay this amount. I'm going to click no thanks. It says, please wait while you process your payments. And perfect. It says payment successful redirecting in five, four, three, two, one. Perfect. And now it says subscription ID and status active. Typically, you should not be forwarding this to your front end. Having another API route or probably a React server component which takes the subscription ID and checks if it's active or not. Don't trust this. Anybody can simply say active here and you will just remember it. If this subscription ID sets to active, you can update your database as well. So don't rely on your webhook as well completely. Just do it from here. And if the webhook finds it, it will do it as well. It doesn't really matter. It's a weird race condition. You know, sometimes this could be faster. Sometimes the webhook can be faster. So make sure you are implementing the logic both ways. So yeah, this is how you can integrate this uh, door payments into your Nextjs application. This is a very, very skimmed down implementation. You probably need to do a lot more, but I just wanted to show you how you can quickly get started with payments and stuff. So the next steps are for you to understand how webhooks work and how you can update your database and how you can configure the redirect path to also update your database. These are the things that you need to do yourself. And I'm going to go to sales here. I'm going to go to subscriptions and you're going to see that this is an active subscription here. I also want to go to my web books and I want to see what's here. It says webbook no matching signature found, which is interesting. All right. So the problem was that there was no problem. Actually, I have this webhook event here and then I have a bunch of errors. And the reason I have these errors are because if I go back to my Dodo payments dashboard and if I go to webhook section, you're going to find that I have two different webhooks here. And the one here is failing because this has a different webhook secret and I was, I was using this while testing. So I'm just going to delete this and I'm not going to get these errors again because this one has error rate of 0% and we have three successful events as you can see. And that are the su successful events that you are seeing here in the webhook one. So you are getting all of the stuff here. So yeah, you're getting the status as active, which is what you probably should be tracking. And if this is not active, you should be revoking your customer subscription as soon as possible. So yeah, this is how you can integrate Dodo payments in your next yes app. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you understood how you can use Dodo payments in your next yes application. Let me know if you have any questions down below and if you have any content ideas, let me know that as well because I'm looking for new content to post on this channel. I also want to post some AI related content. So I want to do some AI assisting coding. Like I don't really like vibe coding as a term, but like AI assisted coding is something I would rather want to explore on this channel. So let me know if you have any, any kind of ideas, project ideas, or something now that we have AI, it would be much more simple and easier for me to make tutorials if you like this video make sure you go ahead and hit the like button hit the subscribe button and let me know down in the comments below what was the favorite part of your video so yeah that's it for this video and i'll see you guys in the next one bye